go. Hello, hello. Okay, so there we go. I don't know what the hell happened there, but uh, anyway, uh, good evening. Yeah, uh, welcome to my stream. My name's Dr. Weez, and uh, I'm a South African overclocker. Uh, tonight, we continue really where we ended off on uh, Tuesday with the RX480 uh, Strix. Um, the difference to tonight's setup is that I got a new motherboard in, uh, so I got a little bit frustrated with my my old LN2 boards not working so well and doing air testing and stuff like that. So I just went and got a new uh, Genie today. So that's that's already all set up and ready to rock and roll. Let's go through and have a look at what we are, what we've got set up on the bench today. The camera angles aren't so great, so just bear with me here. I'll try and see if I can uh, show you what's what going on. Right. So for the cooling tonight, we are rocking the triple red custom loop again. So we've got the EK block on the uh, CPU. We've got the EK pump and the EK reservoir. That's all this mess that you can sort of see here, the top view of it. Um, we're using the Corsair Elite uh, Overclockers edition of the AX1500R. Uh, uh, that's delivering all the power. And then tonight we've got the uh, Maximus 8 Genie. Um, so that's that's already set up. So it's uh, no Vaseline, none of that rubbish has been uh, applied to this board. Brand new out the box today. And uh, yeah, already I can see the benefit in having spent that money. Uh, just on some of the air testing. So tonight we're having a look again at the uh, the Strix RX 480. So I'm going gonna, gonna to pick up again from where I left off on uh, Tuesday where I was having the driver issues and I've identified what the problem was there and I can show you guys exactly how to avoid it. Maybe what I can do is just put another um, operating system in and show you guys the error at some stage. But we will avoid doing any of that tonight because I've had enough streams where things just haven't been working properly. Uh, other than that, uh, I'm going to go through some real bench uh, testing so what i've got set up at the moment is just a processor that hasn't been clocked i've overclocked the memory slightly so now what i want to start doing is i want to stop playing with the frequency of the processor and and the cache just to see if i can find any sort of efficiency sweet spots or anything like that it's going to be a bit of a quick session because i have had a bit of a long day i'm feeling a bit tired so um i might not be the happiest person on the planet but then again that's part of the course for my streams i suppose eh? um because i am live on facebook and on twitch uh, no youtube stream tonight uh, so if you have any questions please don't be shy um, you can ask the questions on twitch and you can find me twitch.tv uh, backslash dr Wee's underscore oc and um yeah please don't be shy let's have a little bit of an interactive session um yeah any questions let me know so um yeah hi mark zero zero five three thanks for tuning how things going there mate what's news in uh Canada it is? I think you're from Canada, right? Or North America. I can never remember. But uh, anyway, yeah, let's get cracking. Let's just, uh, let's just go through. What I want to do first of all is let's go through the, um, the RX 480. So it took me a little while to figure out what was going on with these drivers. Now, I must be honest, AMD really frustrates me. And the biggest problem, or the, the biggest thing that was causing all of my problems is a... Um, a hotfix that needs to be applied to Windows 7. So I'm guessing that if you have um, all the latest drivers and all the latest Windows patches and all that sort of stuff installed, then you wouldn't have really had the problem that I've been encountering. So here again, I think it's uh, as overclockers, we are our own worst enemies. And because we're running these slimmed down versions of operating systems, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, it's just become a bit of a pain in the rear end. So with the driver CD that ASUS supplies, um, that hotfix is in the, in the driver folder. So once you've applied the hotfix, then you can install the, the video card drivers and everything magically starts working. At one stage, I honestly thought there was a problem with my impact because it was funny enough working on other boards, but just not on my impact. But eventually after applying the hotfix on a fresh windows, the card magically started working again. I could open up the the monitor and everybody was happy. So yeah, really strange. It burnt a couple of hours, but you know you've got to you've got to experience these things to be able to deal with them. So um, so I got a question there in the chat. Uh, you ever hit uh, 4K C12 1T on the Genie? Yes. Um, so right from the very beginning, when I first started testing BDAR, uh, I was only using the Genie before I got the Impact, and I was able to hit 4K um, uh, C12. I will say though that it wasn't was stable and it was not um, a very tight uh, thirds, secondary and thirds. 
So, yeah, um, but it is possible. Uh, at the moment, let me just go through and show you what we've got set up at, uh, on the board so far. So like I said, I have been only playing with memory timings this afternoon, or sorry, this evening. Um, and you can see that I've got nothing set on the processor. And the memory I've just gone and set to um, 3466. And I've just been playing around with some of the the secondary and third timings a little bit. It is all on air, so you can't expect to get the same out um, that you would on LN2 with a cold IMC. Some of the crucial things to say is that I haven't touched any of the voltages. So SA voltage and all of that sort of stuff is still stock standard. And I just remembered that I need to install um, TurboV so that I don't have it installed on this operating system. So this operating system is also untweaked. Um, I've also got the NVIDIA drivers installed on this operating system before I installed the, the ATI drivers, thinking that maybe it would fix my problem magically. Um, but yeah, it just turns out as a bit of, bit of a dumbass. So uh, Mark, uh, how are you finding RealBench? Have you um, figured out the bloody OpenCL tweak yet? Like everybody else is scoring crazy how OpenCL scores, or are you in the same boat as the rest of us suffering with uh, ATK? Right, so uh, we've got that installed. Okay, let's just transition that across. Uh, I haven't uh, set up the telemetry. Let me actually do that quickly uh, so that you can just get the temperatures of the OC lab. So real bench is frighteningly long to run. Uh, so please do uh, ask questions if there's anything I can talk about while it's running uh, to be better than us just sitting staring at a screen blankly for three minutes. Uh, okay, I'm not going to worry about the telemetry for now. Okay, so just doing handbrake crashes above 4.8. Um, yeah, so if it's crashing above 4.8, then it's definitely got to do, or uh, my opinion would be temperature and voltage related. Um, that is, in my experience, what cooling are you using? Uh, yeah, thanks for the reminder there, but... Uh, I don't think I'll be submitting any of the scores tonight. This is purely just doing some, uh, some testing. I'll put it on anyway because it is nice to have there. Okay, images and real bench. Okay, and then while we add it, we might as well set up the rest of this operating system for the competition. So hardware monitor and I suppose we do need to do that as well and documents pictures paste okay so let's just go ahead and run one full test we should get a score of about 140k and what that's for is just to make sure that since I've had supper, everything is still running. While it's running, <sighs> custom water loop with tons of rads. Yeah, man, you know, 
I think you need tons of rads and you also need to be in the middle of winter with minus 20 degrees outside or a water tower or something like that. Um, I'm quite amazed at some of the efficient cooling solutions that these guys have got compared to what I'm able to to, uh, to run. Then again, we are hitting summer now and I think the ambient temperature in the OC lab is around 25 degrees, which doesn't help at all. So the plan is for this weekend to borrow a portable air conditioner and really super chill the lab and maybe, I don't know, um, do something to bring the ambient temperature down. I think it might make a difference. I'm not convinced, to be perfectly honest. Um... So with my all-in-one cooler, to put things into perspective a little bit, I'm using the Nepton uh, 280L from Cooler Master. I was able to run 4.87, I think it was, or 4.92, or 4.97, I don't know. I was able to to run basically the same megahertz I could run with my custom loop. The only difference is the, the top end of the temperature spectrum uh, came down by about 15 degrees. So it didn't really help too much with um, with megahertz at the same settings. I've now got a different CPU and so I think that should be a little bit better. Um, what was I doing? Oh yes, I'll figure out my router. Come on. Uh, if you can save time, please wait one minute before we try. Okay. Is my CPU delidded and Tim replaced with liquid metal? Yes, it is delidded. Uh, with liquid metal, no. I'm still waiting for my shipment to arrive from Thermal Grizzly. Um, I was hoping it would have arrived this week, but I'm guessing next week or the week after. We've got a um, an expo coming up at the beginning of next month that I'm hoping that I've got stock for so that I can get Thermal Grizzly out of the market. But yeah, no, I haven't. Uh, I haven't tried liquid metal yet. Um, yeah, blue screen of death 101. You need to. I found when I was hitting that, even uh, putting a little bit more voltage sometimes helped, but mainly that was caused by voltage and cooling. It's a. Uh, it's really frustrating. Uh, when you overclock with liquid nitrogen, you really are spoiled. Um, compared to the guys that are doing these water cooling and clocking with the heat limitations. It's a completely different ball game. I, I have a whole new respect for them, I really must be honest. Yeah, these, um, these guys that are running 1.5 volts with uh, maximum temperatures of around 60, 70 degrees, I'd really like to see what their, their, their water cooling solutions are because I think a lot can be learned Yeah, I'm using HDMI, so I've got audio. Yeah, it's, that's minus 20 degrees. That's quite a big uh, jump. I'll definitely have to try and get my hands on some for the next round, most definitely. 
Uh, hey, Frozen Threat, thanks for uh, tuning in. Uh, so what was the problem with the, the GPU? It turns out that um, Windows 7 requires a hot patch to be applied. So on the CD that comes shipped with the RX 480 uh, Strix, there's a Windows patch. And if you don't apply that patch, then you end up with the issues that I was having. So once I installed the patch, um, everything just seemed to, to come right and to work. So there you can see that the uh, the monitoring is working now and there's no driver problems. Um, here again, I uh, probably am to blame for a lot of the issues we had on Tuesday because it's the first time that a AMD video card has been in the lab for a good couple of years. So it was a bit of a learning curve for me. And that was the... Um, overall issue we had with the VGA. So, okay, so we've got our baseline score there. I'll just go ahead and take a screenshot of that. Um, it's just purely for my personal re uh, reasons, because I want to see now, as we make changes, as to where is it is scaling, where it isn't scaling. I haven't trimmed down this operating system at all. There's a lot to be gained there as well. And the, there's a couple of other things that also really make a big difference, which I won't go into today. Um, but we're just going to have a look see with the stock standard installation. So let's just have a quick look at the RX uh, 480 Strix and the software that comes with it because there's a few things that caught me by surprise that I couldn't figure out and eventually I eventually came around with it. Um, so the first thing is the AMD settings that come with the card. So the last time I used the 7970, things were drastically different and we had AMD overdrive and all that sort of stuff. And it was quite straightforward. I couldn't find on this software, now I might be a dumbass, and if I'd read some reviews, I might've found it, but I eventually did find it today. Um, is to where do you get to the overclocking on the stock standard Radeon driver? So if you don't want to install a GPU tweak or a third party application, which is quite tricky is to try and figure it out. And it's, it's actually really straightforward in the hindsight now. So just go into the gaming menu and then uh, go into global settings. Global Wattman is where you'd now do the tuning. Now, at first look, it just looks like it's a bunch of graphs and it's basically showing you what the hell's going on, right? But what I failed to notice the first time I opened it is a scroll bar on the right-hand side. So once you scroll down, that gives you options now to get to where typically all your overclocking and temperature and fan control and all that sort of stuff is. Now, the overclocking is very limited by the driver. So this card really can't go up too high. Uh, it's very limited. The memory, I can clock up to a maximum of, of 2250. Um, and that's about it. Everything else is controlled by driver. So I'm hoping that somewhere along the line, there will be a special bias that comes out that basically opens it up for us for now. I haven't actually looked to see if there is anything out there, so I'm just leaving it as stock standard. I'm still faced with a stupid problem when uh, I overclock too far that I can't get back into Windows. So I'm not going to overclock much further than what is allowable on the drivers. On Asus, on the Asus GPU Tweak 2, there is also the professional mode available to you. And this is also very limited by by default. So you can clock that GP up to 1400 and the memory clock up to, you know, that limit there. But what you can also do on um, the GP Tweak 2, so if you go into the settings menu, there's an overclocking range enhancement that you can enable. And that basically just allows you to push the card uh, memory up to uh, plus a thousand and you can push the GPU up a little bit more. So I'm not going to enable that because that's when I always ran into all the, all the issues. And I'm just going to cancel that and get out of there. All right, so that's that's basically the software in a nutshell um, regarding the RX 480 Strix. So I'm going to dedicate a whole stream to that at a later date, uh, just doing, again, like we did basically on Tuesday, some game tests. I've had a few suggestions coming on different tests that we can do and stuff like that. So I'm going to just do a little bit of work and prepare that a little bit better and go for it from there. So let's get back to RealBench. And the first thing I'm going to do is pump the CPU up a little bit and see where we go from there. So CPU lottery. OK, 
get the 4.9 chips I have. Hmm. Uh, I must be honest, I've never bought from the CPU lottery. Is that the American website that you guys are talking about? So let's just go ahead and save this so we can just do a start and we just make it 14 and so to 3. Alright, so I'm just going to go 45, 45. Nothing really spectacular. You can see my DRAM volts are just at 1.65. I'm going to set the core voltage to 1.4. And everything else is absolutely stock standard. I've changed nothing else. Tweakers Paradise is all on auto. Um, power management is all on auto. VRM is all on auto. And everything else is all on auto there as well. Okay. Hundred and seventy nine US dollars. Wow. I think that's what I paid for my case king chip. They're there, there about. I think I paid seven hundred US dollars for the case king chip. That's quite a lot. And they they are not nitrogen tested. Those um, silicon lottery chips, or they're just air tested. Okay, that's very interesting. I'll, I won't be buying any more 6700Ks, that's for sure. He's all in one test at 4.9, that's pretty good. So my Case King CPU oh, is 4.8, 1.4 volts. Six point five eight um, at one point nine volts. All right, so first thing we want to do is just check the temperatures, and we'll run the video encoding only. Um, to test the stability of the CPU. If the video encoding passes, and then the second test to check would be the heavy multitasking. If those two pass, then you'll pass the other test, not a problem. Okay, so it's 10. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, yo. I think I'll sleep well tonight. Um, maybe it's eight. Oh, jeez, low battery. Um, yeah, looks like I forgot to charge the uh, earpiece as well. Okay, so that's finished. And let's go ahead and just clock up and see where we crash. Mm. 
Yeah, the temps look all right for now. The voltage is still nice and low, 1.4 volts. So, yeah, the temps will start to jump once I start hitting 1.5, 1.55 volts. This cooling can't push more than 1.5 volts. 1.55 volts, maybe. I was doing some testing at 1.57, and it was passing, but it was... Um, definitely throttling with temperature. Okay, so, um, and node screen. All right, so we should have the telemetry coming up now. Um, you can see the temperature in the lab today is 26.4 degrees. That's the ambient temperature in the OC lab at the moment. Uh, I do have a thermal probe on top of the water block and that is currently plugged into Yeah. All right, so the CPU temperature that will come up now is just a thermal, as it's a probe that I've sort of taped to the top of the water block. I was hoping to get some basic readings out of it. And it's not working. Now there it is there. So the top of the water block, according to that, is 27 degrees. Okay, I'm going to quickly do a booster charge on the earpiece. We'll talk on the chat and then I'll be back on the mic shortly.
testing. Okay, so we've got audio back again. That should give us enough charge to go through the the rest of the session. Um, all right, so just doing a little bit of efficiency testing there on the CPU cache. And it definitely seems to be better at 46 than it was on 47. And that also could be voltage related as well as um, clock related. So there might be an efficiency ratio between uh, 4.8 and 4.6, whereas the cache ratio too close to the CPU ratio could hurt it. So we'll have to just do those tests again um, once we found our happy place for clocks today. So I'm guessing that 49 is going to crash. Um, let's have a look see. Okay, so we have cra no. Okay. So where are the tough spots? Normally at 43%, 60 something percent and around 80 something percent are normally the three places I've noticed that this seem to conk out. Okay, so we passed 43. Our temperatures on the core is pretty, looking pretty good. And we're only at 1.4 volts. I should have been using the CPU from the beginning. Yeah, but our score is two seconds slower than what we had at 4.8. Okay, so let's just test that again. Maybe it was just the service running. Open it. Huh. I must be going mad. I'm shot with four point nine. Maybe I didn't click apply. Like this. I think we might be hitting some thermal throttling. Or something. Okay, so now it should crash.
Oh, that's pretty good. So now I'm going for two. So my current best score is 64,959. has got an encoding score of 59.342. So 59.42 is pretty sharp. Pretty sharp. And let's see if point So if you're watching that log output view, you notice you get the, the two line entries. And then every now and again, you're getting like a, a whole stack of like a six line or eight line entry. I think that that when you get a big entry like that, I think it's like a, a, a work process maybe failed or something like that. I, I seem to think that the efficiency is lost when you're getting those uh, big breaks of entries. Uh, I need to do some more testing around there. I get a sneaky suspicion that it's that, that it's sort of like it's, it's passing, but it's not efficient passing type scenario. It's like you're losing efficiency when that happens. It's just a theory. Um, I need to try and figure out how I'm gonna put that theory into the test. Or maybe it's just, uh, that's maybe just the output. I don't, I don't know, I'd have to actually Pause the replay and have a look. It's just a, a feeling I get. Okay, so we crushed it forty percent, no? Fifty five percent. Blue screen 101, right? Yeah, 101, that's voltage. And that was a uh, blue screen of death 101 at 100.6 at 1.4 volts. And we'd make a note of the percentage as well. That's one of the things I like to do is just uh, keep a a book with notes in it as you're benching, just to write down certain things that happen. Uh, it's always nice to have something to reference back to when it happens again. Or um, normally with liquid nitrogen, you want to write down what works and what instead of what doesn't work. So when you pass a, a score at like a really nice frequency, say 6.5 or something like that, and it passes a run. Make note of what the temperature was. Make note of what you know the voltages and all that type of stuff were. And that way, when things start going drastically wrong, you've got something to fall back onto, like a, a a safe milestone that you know worked before. And when you try and make that work again, and it doesn't work again, then you can normally tell that okay, I've had separation of thermal pairs, I've had uh, this issue or that issue, and it's it always makes life a little bit easier when you you can remember exactly what was good and what was bad. Okay, so now we're going to go straight into there and believe that one there. And we're going to leave all the voltages exactly how they were. And the only thing we're going to do, run as administrator. I want to make that window a little bit bigger. No, can't.
So for those of you who have been living in a hole the whole day uh, and you haven't been onto the hwbots.org website, they announced today that there is a wildcard competition for the World Tour coming up. So if you weren't able to get into one of the top spots for the World Tour to attend the finals in Germany, there is another chance to get in there, which is fantastic. Uh, so it's an online competition. Uh, they've announced some of the rules. Um, from what I can remember off the top of my head, you need to use a RX 460 or 470 video card. Um, and you need to uh, only use a, a Core i3, a Celeron, and a dual core, something to that effect. But it really looks like it's going to be a, a, an interesting competition. Uh, first prize is a trip to the Grand Finals in Germany to take part in the World Tour Grand Finals. Second place prize is worth a thousand eight hundred US dollars. So there's definitely a lot of incentive there uh, to take part. So, um, that's a 6950X, which they're giving away a second prize. Now, personally, I'd like to take part in that competition just to stand a chance to win the, the second place prize. Obviously, I've already got myself a ticket to the finals in Germany in December. Uh, so I don't need to compete for the first place prize, but hell, you know, 6950X is well out of my budget. I can't afford to rush out and buy one of those chips. So to win one is definitely a good incentive. Um, to be honest, I don't know if I'm allowed to enter, seeming, seeing that I've already got a, a spot in the finals, but uh, I think I'll take part anyway, or at least uh, try and get my hands on the hardware and do some some testing of it and then give you guys some, some assistance where necessary, if possible. So I'm going to start making those phone calls and emails uh, tomorrow to see if I can get my hands on a card for fairly cheap. Um, having just bought the motherboard today, I'm not going to rush out and actually buy too much hardware for the rest of the month. Not until at least the end of the Pro OC Cup. And then hopefully one of these days they're going to be announcing the uh, qualifiers for GOC. Um, gossip has it that there will definitely be a GOC this year. Um, well, not actually even gossip, but straight from Mad's mouth, uh, when they put the Hall of Fame memory up for sale, they all but said that uh, you'd needed to qualify for this event. So, um, qualification does seem to sound like it's going to be quite pricey this year, but it's always been a fun event. So, we're on to the 60s again. We had one lucky run there where we broke 59 and we broke 60. Let's have a look what we've got going on here. So the Hall of um, Fame memory is for sale on the Galax website. You can only buy it direct from them. Um, as far as I've seen, you have to go to, I wonder if there's any stock left. Um, I only had a hundred pieces. There should be stock left. If not, uh, yeah, you're going to be in a little bit of hassle to qualify. Uh, I think the website address is, uh, what's it, galaxstore.com. Uh, yeah, you need to create an account there and you'll be after away. So, out of all the b dial memory that I tested, it was definitely uh, the strongest and easiest to clock kits. So we're going to see a lot of uh, great scores. That qualifier is going to be exceptionally difficult. If all the kits are lived up to the same sort of quality, um, it's going to be a really interesting come down to the processor type uh, qualifier. Um, I got kit number 20. Uh, I see Extreme Addict got kit number one. Um, and who knows who's got in what in between. But yeah, this is a, uh, there we go, I'll bring it up on the screen here, ah, wrong mouse, start that again, so if we just transfer that, so there it is, uh, transfer that, I don't know if you can see that nicely, uh, that way. Kit number 20. Alright, so 
really nice bead die. I think it's really well binned. I think uh, the guys at uh, Galax really did a good job there, Mad, and everybody else. Now we just have to have everybody uh, use and abuse it and see how it goes. Yeah, $350 did hurt. Uh, luckily, I sold some stuff, and I had a couple of dollars sitting in PayPal, which I just used and abused. That's exactly what I thought as well. I've got so much um, potato bead dye sitting here, as well as Hyper X memory, and um, yeah, I've just got so much DDR4. I went from a very late start on the DDR4 game uh, because I wasn't on the um, recipient list for X99 when it first came out. So it took a really long time for me to get into DDR4. Uh, but now that I've started, I've just got memory coming out of my ear. It's almost like a, a bad. Um, addiction that I've got is just buying up this bloody memory. The problem is on in the second hand market in South Africa is that you just can't get your money back. So I go and spend 170 euros on a set of, of uh, three, uh, 3600 C16s and um, yeah, I could, the most I can get back for them is like $80 on the second hand market here. It's really, um, it's, it's really a bad uh, deal for us. So on the Triton Z C sixteens, uh there again I also only bought oh there we go, that's a great score. Fifty eight nine five two. Um I only bought um two sets of that. Out of those two sets, one of them was a bit of a flop and two of them were what I thought were, were above average, you know, they could do two thousand C twelve. But, you know, Waza was a real pain in the ass. Uh, as you can see on some of the streams I did I was using that memory. You had to do a really small was, and there's just it's just pain in the ass compared to these these um, Hall of Fame. It's really great. Yeah, so Frozen Threat, they're still rocking out a 4790k. Um, yeah, you might look at moving towards uh, Skylake one of these days with um, the the next generation soon to be released. You might be able to pick up one at a really reasonable price. That's for sure. Okay, so 58. So, if we go back to my original, my previous best encoding, I'm um, a good second, almost uh, half a second, so faster than I have been ever before. That's encouraging. And that's what I was hoping to see. If I'm ever going to stand a chance of catching. Uh, our top guys at the moment with massive scores. Let me just get that score up on the screen quickly. Um, just to do a comparison. That's what's really nice about these uh, ambient temperature competitions. Everybody seems to just be uh, really pushing the scores up. There's no real sandbagging or not from what I can see so far. I guess uh, Mark 0053 is busy sandbagging because I haven't seen him submit a single score yet. Right, so encoding on the best score currently uploaded is 58.218. I'm um, at 58.9, so I've still got about 100 me uh, 100 megahertz that I can increase by. So I'm at 4.92. I reckon I could probably run this chip with this cooling at 5.015, probably 5.0. So my efficiency seems to really be right up there at the moment. It's looking good. Let's see where we can push this process a little bit further. Uh, before we actually move on, why don't we just do a heavy multitasking and see if we are stable on that. And I'm gonna go ahead and just kill this.
Yeah, let me know how Win8 uh, turns out, especially the image editing um, test on Win8. I quickly tested Windows 10, and uh, yeah, it was about um, 20 seconds slower on Windows 10 compared to Windows 7, so I'd be interested to see what Windows 8.1 does for you there. Oh yeah, where's the box? Hold a second. Okay, so that looks like it works. That's good. 63. Uh, this will be a lot slower than my best score. And let's run a full. Okay, so this is my first Z170 ASUS board that I've bought full retail from a distributor. And normally the biggest problem we have in South Africa with any motherboard manufacturer is the RMA side of it because they don't have service centers in this country that really know how to look after customers. And one of the things that I saw in the box was a ASUS warranty information form for selected European countries. So there's a pickup and return policy for certain European countries within one month of purchase date. Okay, so it's only within one month of purchase date. I got all excited. I thought that maybe there would be some sort of a, a international warranty like Intel offers. So this little card was in the um, was in the box and got me all excited until I read the small print. Anyway. I guess we're still stuck with the same old, same old. Yeah, so the the module that you're talking about is the uh, PC, uh, the, the PS2 mouse connector for the impact. Now, I was lucky enough when I was in uh, Taiwan for Computex to get my hands on one of them directly from the guys that were around HQ and uh, while that's running we can show you quickly so you take the uh, I think it's a wireless card or the sound card you take out it's a wireless card and just transition across there so on the impact so you remove the wireless card and then you plug this card on and all it really is it's got the header for the OC panel and then the PS2 connector uh, for the keyboard um, I have seen them floating around eBay so that's probably going to be your best bet. I don't think they ever were a retail product. And every time I've asked to try and get my hands on more for other people that have asked for them, I've been uh, I've been shut down. I know there is quite a big request for them and demand for them. I'm hoping that on the next revision of the Impact, they actually make them a, an available product. It really would um, make some people happy, I'm sure. So the good news from today's session so far is that it sounds like my bloody water pump is packing up as well. It's got a particular little vibration noise coming out of the motor every now and again. <sighs> it never stops. So the competition that I was telling you about earlier with the ticket to the um, the finals in Germany, it's called the, H uh, the World Championship Wildcard Contest. So the stages are made up, there's three stages in total. It's 3D Mark Power Strike Extreme. Then there's GPU, GPU Power 1B for GPU and Y Cruncher Power 1B. Now, I've never heard of Y Cruncher 1, uh, Power before. 
So that, that's a new one. And uh, yeah, the hardware limitation is uh, um, Z170. Uh, Core R3 Pentium Celeron CPUs only. That's very interesting. So I think that's really going to be quite interesting. It, it, when does the stages open? Uh, it doesn't actually give a date to when it starts. Uh, I think they're just announcing it today. So I definitely think I'm going to do some, some playing with that. I won't be taking part. I'll get my hands on a RX 460 and uh, see what we can do. I don't know if there's any limitation on the cooling. I uh, don't think there would be. Maximus 8 Genie. Add it to my pile of Genie boxes. Mm, I've run out of space in the OC lab. Need to build, build more shelv shelving this weekend, right? So, where are we? 163.4. That's not a bad score. Let's go ahead and upload that anyway. Uh, I'm not going to be able to upload it. I have installed the Nitro card drivers. Or have I? Hold on. Uh, I don't think I've installed any card drivers yet. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter. Um, let's add assistance to it quickly. Uh, install drivers. Okay, so one other bit of really useful information now, you've all seen me, or if you haven't seen me, I use an application called Clonezilla. Now, basically, what I use the application for is to make uh, clones of my hard drive so that I have, like, restore points that I can easily get back to, like, a fresh installation or something that effect. I'm sure you're all quite familiar with what I do there. So, an interesting observation that I seem to have made, and before Computex, I had a major issue with life about... Uh, my Windows date defaulting to like five, four, seven, six, or something like that. It just causes issues with installing drivers and all sorts of stuff. But anyway, it took me a long time to actually figure out what the problem was there, and it turned out it was a Windows date. Anyway, back to the story. So I've discovered now that it, I think it's Clonezilla that does that. It like sort of like blanks out the dates in the operating system or something to that effect. So if you are going to use Clonezilla, just do yourself a flavor and just make sure that you check your system date before you start going crazy with installations and stuff like that because um, it can be very frustrating to try and figure that problem out anyway so where were we now um, okay so we're 163 and um, oh, we need the competition background Let's just do this, uh, CMD, SLMGR, re-arm. Okay. And save that as working. And then we'll just go up to eight. So, yeah, I used to use uh, Norton Ghost. Uh, it's still my preferred. It's so, so bloody easy. The problem with Norton Ghost is that for the life of me, the version I've got and the, all the versions I've tried do not work with Windows 8 or Windows 10. 
And that is the reason why I changed to FileZilla ultimately is because I just couldn't come right with Windows 8 and 10 cloning. And the only way I, I managed to come right was using CloneZilla. So I'll be doing benching again this weekend. Um, my fiance comes back home on Tuesdays, so life gets back to a little bit of normality. There won't be a stream on Tuesday night for obvious reasons. I haven't seen her for three weeks. And um, yeah, so my life gets back to a little bit of normality, not so much overclocking uh, from next week. Uh, we'll be back for our normal two weeks. And um, yeah, thanks, Mark. I appreciate that. And so, yeah, this weekend, what I'm going to do is uh, I need to, I was supposed to start tonight with Pro OC Cup. So I think I'll definitely do it this weekend. Um, that will be 980 Ti on Liquid Nitrogen on Broadwell E running Vantage. So there's two things I need to do before we go and run this session. One, I need to prepare a new operating system. Uh, it looks like Windows 7 32-bit is the one to use. And then I need to just do the pre-testing on my 980 TRs. I've got three TRs. Uh, I need to just figure out which is the one I'm going to abuse. Um, if I get lazy, I'll just use the one that I've used before because I know it can sort of do and just run with it. But yeah, I'd suggest signing up or following me on Twitch to see when I go live. That one is really not going to be scheduled at all. Um, probably Saturday sometime in the afternoon and Sunday sometime in the morning uh, is when I'll be playing this weekend. So um, Mark, how are things going with your Titan X? Have you uh, decided to e-power the thing yet? Okay, so my microphone is complaining low battery again. Yeah, well, um, let us know when you do that live stream, and I'll be interested to watch. I'll, I'll follow you on Twitch. I think it's I keep preaching to everybody else that they must follow me so that I know when they go live. But uh, I'm very slack at doing the same. So I've been speaking to all the local um, local guys about Titan X, and yeah, there's no allocation for South Africa by the looks of things. Nobody's able to get there. There's a back order of about eight of them, apparently. Very disappointing. So you won't see me being, doing any Titan X benching unless I get invited to an HQ somewhere along the line to, to test one. Okay, so 163,700. Nice little score. Uh, close to temperature monitoring. Oh well. All right, let's go more. 
So where are we now? 142 and 8. So let's try 101. And see where we go with that. Yeah, for a card of that price, there's definitely no way I'll be risking uh, buying it off eBay. That's why I was actually trying to buy it through one of the local distributors, but they are also unable to um, get their hands on any. It's very frustrating. Yeah, so it made the noise here now. But anyway, uh, 1080 TR will hopefully be out one of these days. Okay, so that failed at 67%. Uh, 101. So I'll wait for my... Um, I'll play with uh, the 1080 TR. Even 1080s, unless I need it for a contest, I won't be buying one. I just don't see the point, to be perfectly honest. Okay, so where are we sitting at for time now? Put it to nine. So the, the feed is pretty good to type A. I've got a total of drop, 50, uh, 50 drop frames. Normally that's a much larger number than that. Okay. Right, so there's the advantage of saving a last known profile. Really easy to get going on it. So we want to try 101. And we just want to bump that voltage up maybe to 35. Because we are not using extreme cooling, you've really got to be uh, cautious when just pumping up the bolts. You want to have the absolute bare minimum in there just to 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 um, successfully run the tests efficiently. And then once you found your theoretical threshold, then you need to dial back other voltages to see if you can maintain stability with less heat being generated. Like I said, I really take my hat off to some of these guys that are able to push these systems on uh, on water cooling to the frequencies they achieve. It's incredible. Excuse me. Those temperatures are really good. But yeah, I hundred percent agree with you about Windows Seven. Uh, being the right operating system for um, for real bench. Yeah, I, I tried Windows 10 and just on the first test alone, um, 
well, it wasn't beneficial. Maybe if you slimmed it down and did some fancy footwork, it might be worthwhile having a look at. But I think until we're forced to look at Windows 10 as an option, I think we just keep it as Windows 7. So on the next generation uh, and the next AMD generation, they say that they'll only have Windows 10 support. I'm sure that there'll be some hack drivers released, at least for us. I get a feeling that that's slow, that heavy multitasking. But anyway, that's not sufficiently stable. Let's try a little more. Seventy percent. Nine percent. Okay, okay. Oh, what am I doing? I don't want to do everything. I think it's time to get to that time where I must um, think about hitting the sack. I can feel my my personality failure encroaching on my mood.
Good evening, Gigi Skull six six six. Thanks for tuning in. How are you doing? So you've uh, just joined us this evening. We're currently running some real bench testing, um, all on air with a custom on on air. It's all custom water loop stuff. Uh, just a basic EK water block on the processor with a EK pump and uh, just a triple rad with some. Cooler Master Jet Flow fan, six of them in total, doing a push pull uh, configuration. So the processor we've got clocked to 4.9 something with some memory that is clocked to, um, hell, I can't even remember, I think 1770 or something around there. Uh, the memory's been tuned down a little bit and uh, yeah, basically just doing some efficiency slash uh, stability testing. Uh, on the processor, just trying to get a feel for the voltages and the temperatures and that type of stuff. Uh, you've joined in now basically towards the end of the session. I'm getting a little tired. Um, but yeah, the replays will be on YouTube tomorrow. If you missed anything. Um, if you tuned into the stream on Tuesday and you saw me having some issues with the RX480 Strix. So I managed to... Um, I've got a question on the chat there, I'll answer that in a sec. So I managed to resolve those issues with the drivers. It turns out that there is a Windows hotfix that is required in order for the new generation of stuff to work properly. And that is basically in a nutshell the problem I had. So I had a question on the chat if I'm using water cooled loop is including effect pelter. So no. Uh, I'm not using a, a pelter at all. It's just a straight up uh, water loop. Um, you can see by my temperatures that I'm definitely not using any sort of active cooling other than air and, and the pump. Uh, the ambient temperatures uh, in the OC lab is currently sitting at 26 degrees. So my, my minimum temperature is very close to my, my ambient temperature. Uh, so thanks for tuning in tonight. It's always nice to have some, some uh, questions asked on the chat. So let's go to five. Actually, we were at three. Let's go to four. So the reason why we are looking at the real bench um, test tests is because of a competition that's currently running on HWBot, um, um, which is based on the real bench benchmark and it's uh, an ASUS competition so you are restricted to the ASUS motherboard but you can win a next generation motherboard in December so I think that's why the majority of us are taking interest into this is for the next gen. So I did not see what percentage that was. This was 101.4 So this is where it starts to get a little tricky, is trying to manage the temperature and the voltage.
That's a pretty good clock, that. Not too shibby. If it runs, of course. Let's just go save. I think our cache might be a bit high as well. Let's just take that one back a notch. So again, the the encoding is a heavier test, so we always run that one first just to make sure it's stable with that before moving on to the next tests. Uh, thanks for the host there, um, ggskull666. Uh, there's post 43. 1465, I think I said. 79%, yeah. 101.5 Our temperatures are still alright And let's go try 75 
Okay, so we should have some audio back again about that. Um, yeah, audio is back. All right, so this is going to be the last full run I do, and uh, I'll pick it up again tomorrow. I'm going to call it a night after this is completed. Um, the time now is about uh, it's coming up half past nine in the evening, and I've still got a little bit of uh, work to do. So I think um, the CPU is definitely better than the first one I was using. Uh, there's still a lot of points to be gained on some other configurations. And definitely, I think with the Strix RX 480, uh, my OpenCL score is about 20k higher. It's still not as high as what everybody else is doing, but um, it's not heavily weighted in this benchmark. So. I'm not too stressed about it. I would love to know why my K samples are only at 2100, where everybody else is like uh, at 30, 3100 and 2800 and all that sort of stuff. I, I can't figure out that K sample story. Um, you know, and all the reading and all the other websites, oh, that's, that's crashed. Um, and all the other websites and everything else, they all say that it all relates to drivers and to open CL version, all that sort of stuff, but you know what? Um, I've tried installing open CL drivers and a couple of other things and I haven't managed to come right with anything. All right guys, so with that with that blue screen, uh, I think that's me for the evening. Um, I'm gonna call it a night and uh, we'll pick up uh, some more overclocking over the weekend. Uh, I'd like to just say thank you to everybody that, uh, that has tuned in, I uh, appreciate it. Um, and I especially like to thank everybody for the, um, the commentary and the, and the questions and the feedback in the channel. It's really nice to interact with you guys. I really do appreciate your time. But anyway, I think let's, uh, let's wrap that up and call it a night and we'll be back on the weekend. So until then, uh, happy benching. We'll see you then. And we're out. Cheers, guys.